In this less than exciting conclusion to the solar powered crypto series, I'll show you what happened late last summer as I tried to accurately gauge the profitability of my solar powered crypto mining rig. So before you smash that thumbs down button, let me warn you this episode won't be very satisfying, but I want to tie off the series and let you know what happened. And I didn't want to waste the footage, and you guys know I'm not afraid to show mistakes and fails. Anyway, at the end of the last episode, we still needed to measure the energy consumption of the solar powered mining rig, and then calculate the profitability based on the amount of Ethereum we mined. This type of accurate measurement over time was a perfect fit for my PowerMon power meter from Thornwave Labs. Some of you guys have probably seen me use this in other videos, but this thing is awesome, and I use it all the time. I'll put a link in the video description below. Anyway, basically this device allowed me to remotely monitor the system with a Bluetooth connection to an app on my phone and log a bunch of parameters over time. So I made sure we had some sun in the forecast for good solar production and fired up the mining rig. With the computer powered on, but before turning on the mining application, I checked to make sure the power mon was working. Here you can see some baseline numbers of the power consumption of the rig before the graphics cards get cranked up. You can see the line that says power meter will keep track of the watt hours that are consumed by the rig over time. With that baseline information noted, I launched the mining software. As you can see, the power consumption jumped to over 300 watts with the two graphics cards online and over time it averaged about 350 watts. So far so good. My plan was to let the mining rig run for a month and then collect the energy consumption data and the amount of Ethereum mined so I could do the math and give you guys a wonderful conclusion whether solar powered Ethereum mining could be profitable or not. It was late July at that point here in Texas and normally there would be tons of sun. Unfortunately I ran into some weather that hindered the solar production and caused the batteries to run out during the test. So I reset the power meter and tried again, but the same thing happened again. And then during my third attempt, something happened that stuck a fork in the project forever. On September 15th, 2022, Ethereum switched over to proof of stake instead of proof of work. I won't bother with a technical explanation of the difference, but for me, it meant that I could no longer mine for Ethereum. I spent a few months looking for another cryptocurrency to mine, but according to my research and my rough math, there weren't any other currencies that had any chance at being mined profitably on solar. Plus, there was a ton of uncertainty in the crypto world as miners were switching to other currencies and flooding those pools, and it was a big headache. So I gave up. This fail reinforces one thing though. Solar is unpredictable in the real world. I love solar and promote it to anyone that will listen but it has strengths and weaknesses, and one weakness is that it just isn't consistent enough for something like this unless you overbuild the system to compensate for long periods of cloudy conditions or rain, and that makes the investment very expensive, and thus the whole thing becomes unprofitable. So, my best guess conclusion to this whole thing was if we accounted for all of the costs of solar, and the rig, and everything that went into this project, it would not be profitable for years, if ever. And while it was a fun project, my money would have been better invested in the stock market or something else. Thanks for watching. Please let me know what you guys think in the comments below.